Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Jesus, like a shepherd, has led you here to this time and this place for worship. And he also provided the way from freedom from sin and death to abundant life everlasting. A special welcome to our guests and visitors who are here with us today. We give thanks to God also for our guest organist this morning, Chris Peck. Welcome back. Thank you for your gift of music today. Mike Mercer, our regular organist, is still in need of our prayers as he's continuing to heal and taking some time off to do so. Your prayers for him are appreciated. I want to extend a thank you to those of you who helped Monday in serving that funeral meal for the Klepsig family. Those of you who provided a dish to pass for that meal, your love and support as they laid their beloved Karen to rest is greatly appreciated. There's no better respite for a family at that time than to come into a safe place to be fed with a meal and to be surrounded with God's love. So thank you. We rejoice this day in many ways. First, since they put me on the spot, I'm gonna put them on the spot. Right there in the back row are uh, one of my youth for my youth ministry days. Samantha and her parents, Renee and Bill are here. Samantha is now a college student in Decatur and they have shocked me this morning. So, um, Samantha, I'm so happy to see you and your parents. <laughs> Welcome to St. Paul, where we put you, you know, first and foremost, yes. We delight that our own Mary Ann Smith, twin sister of Dan Millville, uh, when you are twins, you just go together like a pair, right? Okay, Mary Ann affirms her faith today uh, and the promises that were made for her when she was baptized here in this church as a child. So we rejoice with her. We also rejoice that we are receiving not one, not two, not three, but four new members again today. So Kate and Dave and Mitch Ruff, you have blessed us abundantly with your presence for some time now, and we are grateful that you are here. And we welcome you into the Lord's family here at St. Paul today. We also welcome Becky Ford, who is not able to be here with us in physical presence today, but has given me permission to share her prayer request with you. You've seen her name on our prayer list. Uh, Becky is enduring cancer and treatment for cancer. She's currently hospitalized, but she has made the decision to become an official member of St. Paul, so we will speak her name today, uh, granting her that membership that truly comes through Christ and not us. And so, Becky, when you see this, we love you, we are praying for you, and we promise to continue to walk with you on this journey. There's another exciting announcement that needs to be made. Where is she? There are two pennies in this house. There she is. I see you. Penny White, congratulations. You are two days, one and a half days, however you count it, into your retirement. Congratulations. Congratulations. I hope you find rest, renewal, and refreshment, and no honeydew jobs from your spouse or your children for quite some time. And I promise not to enlist you to do too many things just yet. I I want to invite you to a time of fellowship after worship today. We have coffee and juice and chocolate milk um, available and some donuts today. So come on down and have a time of fellowship with us. We would really appreciate that. May is tomorrow, May 1st. And so that uh, provides opportunity for us to have a little fun in the month of May in several ways. First of all, we are praying for little Miss Haven Hyden, who in two weeks will be baptized here at St. Paul. So Haven, our prayers are with you. 
And in food pantry news, we did this, I don't know if it was last year or the year before, but we had a race. You know, the NFL just had their draft. Well, the food pantry needs some help too. And so we are gonna have the chicken versus tuna race. We need non-perishable protein items, specifically for the month of May. We need some canned chicken, and we need some canned, say it with me. Tuna, chicken, tuna, chicken. All right, your brain just remembered it, so it's officially on your grocery shopping list. All right, we're gonna have a race. How many people think that we are going to receive more cans of chicken than tuna? Raise your hand. Those are the ones who prefer chicken over tuna. <laughs> How many people think we are gonna receive more, more cans of tuna in this race? Those are the people who'd rather have a tuna fish sandwich? All right, we're gonna see, we're gonna count it. Each week we're gonna have a race between chicken and tuna. And kids, we may need your help to count these cans and have a little race around the sanctuary because it is okay to get up and move during worship if you need to, you want to, or to have a little fun. So with that in mind, I need some movers and shakers this morning. We need extra musicians. Chris can do it on his own, but he would like some help. Who's going to play tambourine maraca for me today? Uh, Samantha, you're in here. Which one would you like, my dear? The table belongs to Jesus. Therefore, all are welcome to partake in the sacrament of Holy Communion. At that time, an usher will direct you to come forward. I ask you to extend your arms, cup your hands to receive the pre-packaged elements. Return to your pew by side aisle. Consume the elements in your pew. The top layer is a foil layer exposing the bread. The second layer is, I said foil, is a cellophane layer exposing the bread. The second layer is a foil layer exposing juice. For those joining us online, now would be a time to take out your elements prepared by the church or grab bread, cracker, even a piece of cereal, wine, juice, even water is fine. Jesus transcends all time and spaces and invites you to this meal. So I need two people to help with picking up the empty packaging. Emerson, I see your hand up there. Thank you, Emerson. And let's see, do I see another hand? Chayton, thank you. Rizzy, I see your hand too. Could I have you come help me with communion today? Would you come stand by pastor for communion? Yeah, you can help me. All right. Take a deep breath with me. Prepare our hearts and our minds for worship today. I invite you to stand in body or spirit. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Amen. Join to Christ in the waters of baptism. We are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Christ the firstborn of the dead. 
In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash, wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I invite Mary Ann Smith and twin brother Jan Milho to come forward for affirmation of baptism. I invite you to turn in your hymnals to Affirmation of Baptism, which should be listed in your bulletin. Is it page 234? Mm -hmm. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for Mary Ann, one with us in the body of Christ, who is making public affirmation of her baptism. I present Mary Ann Smith, who desires to make public affirmation of her baptism. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you that you have made us your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called us to yourself, enlightened us with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished us in the community of faith. Uphold us and all your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Mary Ann, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Congregation, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Mary Ann, you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, and to serve all people following the example of Jesus and strive for justice and peace in all the earth. If so, respond, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support Marianne and to pray for her and her life in Christ? 
We do, and we ask God to help us divide us. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Amen. Myriad, receive this blessing. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Mary Ann the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Let us rejoice with this sister in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Let's welcome Mary.
Let us pray. O oh God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This time I invite Terry Simpson and the children to come forward for the children's message. A noisy offering bucket is empty at this time. And we're starting a new collection. You guys just sent me an oil belt Christian camp and St. Elmo and Altamont Fellowship of Christian Athletes Fund to help kids learn about God even when they're playing sports. First reading for this morning is from the book of Acts, chapter 2. The 
the baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. The psalm for today is Psalm 23, which is printed in your bulletin and also in your hymnal. And we will read Psalm 23 in unison. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in one. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures, and leads me beside still waters. He restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along the right pathway to where I may say. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me. You anoint my hand with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure while you, while, when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. sheep. 
All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Christ. You, Christ. May we see that. Grace and peace to you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The problem with a lectionary in a church is you get these snippets of scripture pieced together, and you often miss what has come before is being shared today and what comes after in which you just heard. And so what came before this gospel lesson in the ninth chapter of John is Jesus in conflict with the Pharisees. He has just healed the man who was born blind, and he healed this man on the Sabbath day. The Pharisees were saying this man was born blind because of the sin of his parents or generations before him. And Jesus says, no, it is not so, this is an example of Jesus breaking those bounds and boundaries that religious leaders had put in place. Jesus said the man was not born blind because of sin, and now he no longer is blind. And so then we have the story we just heard, Jesus talking about the being a gate. Did you catch it? Twice he says, I am the gate. So, many of us see Jesus in the image of shepherd. Depending upon where you're seated, you can see the stained glass window of Jesus cradling the sheep, the stained glass window depicting the 23rd Psalm we read in unison today. It's easy to view Jesus as shepherd, the one who leads and guides and directs, the one who cradles the sheep in his arms, the one who is charged with protecting, the one who is charged with speaking a voice in hopes that the sheep will follow. But do you know anything about sheep? They're not good followers. They like to do their own thing. That is why we the people are called the sheep. We like to do our own thing, okay? In this snippet of John, we don't get so much the taste of I am the shepherd. That is the verses that come directly after this. But twice Jesus says, I am the gate. In the Gospel of John, Jesus is revealing himself in imagery. He calls himself the bread of life, the light of the world, the gate or the door, the good shepherd, the resurrection and the life, the way, the truth, and the life, and also the vine. These are known as Jesus, I am statements twice i am the gate well what is the purpose of a gate is it to keep people out or is it to let people in let's think about that baby gates do they keep people out or do they keep babies in thank you good answer oh Puppy gates. You ever have a puppy? Does the gate keep, keep the puppy in or the puppy out? Keeps the puppy in the restricted space, maybe potty training. Keeps the puppy from going out into the space where you don't want them to go. Or what about gates to prisons? Are they there to let people in or let people out? Keep them in? 
Brent has to walk through a gate every day to go to work when he works at the prison. He's being let in. And someday when those who are incarcerated have served their time, those gates will open and they will be led out into the world. Gates are for both keeping in and keeping out. Property. You ever have to open a gate to get into a piece of property? It's for protection, right? <coughs> Jesus says, I am the gate. But this is what he meant when he said, I am the gate. He said, I am the gate. I am in charge of who's coming in and who's going out. Christian people, this is not your job. It is not your job to determine who comes in and who comes out. Jesus is the one who on the cross suffered death. He bled for you and he opened the gate open wide. Open wide. And the gate has never closed. That gate has been opened wide through his sweat, through his tears, through his blood, an excruciating death on that cross for you and for all people. The gate is forever open wide because of God's grace and mercy and love. Jesus' love poured out for you in his death opens the gate wide and frees us from our sin and frees us from the finality of death. The gates of heaven have been opened wide because of Jesus. He is not the gatekeeper. He is the gate. He is the way and the truth and the life to the Father. He is the bread of God. He is the resurrection of life. He is the gate. He provided a way, a way in, a way to a safe place, a way to freely come and go. He provided freedom for you and for me and for every single human being and creature in this world. Every time you encounter a gate from now on in your life, I would encourage you to think of Jesus. To remember your baptism and the promises that are made in baptism. To remember the freedom to come in and to go out from your places of worship, from your homes, from your extracurricular activities, from your schools, from your jobs. The freedom that we have comes through Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. He is the gate. We are his sheep. And he's there to lead and guide and direct us as a shepherd. But first, we need to remember, he is the gate. And so we give thanks to God for his life, for his death, and for his resurrection, so that we may live life abundantly as a free gift from him to <coughs> you because of God's love for you. Thanks be to God. Amen.
are introducing them and our church council president, Bill Hammonds. We receive our new members with joy.
Our service continues with prayers. We will grow in the house. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You are the shepherd who gathers us in our mighty and loving arms. Help your church to listen to your voice, especially when the voices of sin, idolatry, and oppression threaten to overpower us. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. The green pastures, still waters, and dark valleys of this earth all belong to you, O oh Lord. Sustain your creation with a love that is both mighty and just. Where there is destruction, bring healing. Where there is desolation, bring abundance. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You proclaim shepherding love, comfort, and protection for all people in all of creation. Direct leaders in our own time to learn from your example and instruction. Give them servant hearts that they generously seek the good of all. Hear us, O oh God. You journey with us wherever our paths may lead. We pray for those feeling overwhelmed by anxiety or depression, or suffering with illness of body, mind, or spirit. Open their ears so they will hear your voice of comfort and peace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You are the sheep gate that gives safety to your beloved flocks. Provide protection for refugees, victims of domestic violence, and those who are in prison, and all who are vulnerable to violence and mistreatment. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You are the wide open gate. In your body and blood, you poured out love for all. We lift to you those for whom scripture has been used against them as a weapon or closed gate for those who are divorced, those of the LGBTQIA plus community, for the black and brown. Lead them to freedom from harm. Hold them safely in your arms of grace and love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is You call your sheep by name and lead them to the valley of death. We give you thanks for those who have died and now dwell in your house forever. Be with those who mourn, and give them hope in the promise of the resurrection. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. At this time, you receive your tithes and your offerings. The tithes and the offerings here at St. Paul not only go to help support the ministries here at St. Paul, but they help to support the whole people of God for the whole church of God. And so if you're joining us online, I invite you to uh, send contributions to St. Paul ELCA at 2293 East U.S. Highway 40. Altamont, Illinois, 
shared in the meal that we are about to receive, let us pray. Generous God, in this meal we offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth, and the breaking of this bread reveals to us the risen one, and the pouring of this wine pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to right to right. It's indeed our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to God as we remember. And the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He blessed it and broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. And deliver us from the evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The table is set. Christ is the host. Come as you are. For those joining us online, this is the body of Christ given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. You may be seated, and an usher will direct you. <coughs>